Hi, um, as Mike said, I'm Megan Lane, and I'm super excited to be talking with you today about the Center for Public Engagement with Science. Uh, we are housed within the UNC Institute for the Environment, and as you can see on the slide, this is a picture of our, our team. Um, we, this presentation is going to be a little bit different from the others you've heard so far today, uh, but we work with um, faculty, staff, and students on campus. Uh, to take their research and bring it out into the community so that action can be taken on the research um, into North Carolina communities and beyond. Um, so I'd actually like to learn a little bit about um, everyone in the room before I keep going. Um, raise your hand if you are from North Carolina. Okay, so about half maybe. Um, raise your hand if you have ever done any um, environmentally focused or sustainability focused volunteer work? Awesome, the majority of you. All right, one more question. This is more for the students in the room, um, but I'd love to hear if um, during your time here at UNC, um, or, uh, are you interested in doing an environmental or sustainability focused internship or have you already completed one? Awesome, okay, that's great to hear, um, cool. So, um, like I said, we partner with um, faculty on campus, um, and you can see in this picture on the right is Dr. Tamlin Pavelski um, and my colleague Sarah Yelton, and this is a picture from our uh, Lake Observations by Citizen Scientists and Satellites project. This is a um, citizen science um, or community science project um, funded by NASA, really cool project. Um, basically, we take, um, lake gauges, which are like yard-sized rulers, um, meter-sized rulers, and we put them in a, a lake, lakes around the world. People who are walking by or paddling by in their boat can text um, the measurement into our website. We collect our data, it's instantaneous, and we pair that data with satellite imagery to learn about the um, changing, how the lake uh, volume is changing over time comparing to the other lakes around it. We also um, work with local communities in North Carolina and respond to their health issues. So you can see in this picture my colleague uh, Dr. Andrew George is um, sharing water quality results as part of our Well Empowered study. This study is part of the Superfund Research Program um, which is funded by NIEHS, and it's in the Gilling School of Gl Global Public Health. Um, our current iteration of the study is taking place in Union County, where we have sent bottles to, to residents of the county, and they have taken samples to sample their well water. Um, a big part of this project is educating residents on why they should test their well water. And one big reason for that is because well water is held to different standards than public drinking water. So it's important that they know what they're drinking, especially if it's not clean or safe for them to be drinking. Um, so in this study, that's you know the first step. And then after they get their samples, we help them understand uh, their results because they can often, oftentimes be pretty confusing. Um, and we want them to know um, if they do have contamination, what can they do about it? What are the health impacts and what are the solutions? So that's, that's um, how we are working with Union County. We have plans to um, move into other counties in, in North Carolina as well. We also work closely with um, environmental and health agencies uh, to communicate risk. Uh, so this picture is showing Spanish-speaking participants in a focus group on fish consumption advisories, um, getting their feedback on, um, are these signs, do you understand these signs? Would you follow what these signs are saying? Um, and this project is part of um, larger, a larger piece of work that's led by Dr. Kathleen Gray, and she's in the room here today. She's a, um, one of the leading ex experts on environmental health literacy. Um, and that is highlighted in this project. We also work with environmental and public health professionals. So this picture here is from a stakeholder advisory meeting working with um, people who manage nutrients in their watershed. Um, and so here they're playing a board game, which we've found to be a pretty effective way of teaching these concepts. Um, but basically, they're learning about best management practices in their watershed and how to keep the watershed healthy for 
the residents, the ecosystem. Um, so we found that that's a pretty engaging way for that group, that audience, and we do similar things with other audiences as well. Uh, we also work with public health professionals in doing uh, trainings for um, nurses and home visitors and other clinical professionals on uh, lead poisoning prevention, healthy homes, and environmental asthma triggers. So they can share the knowledge that they learn from our trainings when they are meeting um, with a family um, at the doctor's office or they're doing a home visit to look for other health hazards. And we work with classroom teachers and informal educators. Uh, so this is a neat project where um, the teachers are co-developing curriculum on uh, PFAS science, that research coming from the university, and trying to make it engaging for their students, their high school students. So this is part of a program called Iterative uh, Design to Engage All or Idea Learners. Um, let me raise your hand if you're familiar with the term Gen X. Okay, so Gen, or how about um, PFAS? Are we familiar with PFAS? Okay, great. So more with Gen X, that's kind of been more in the news than PFAS, um, but Gen X is an example of a PFAS. There are thousands of these chemicals. They're emerging. We don't know like anything about some of them, and then some of them we know a little bit about, um, but that makes it kind of challenging for us to communicate about PFAS with lay audiences. Um, and that's why this is really cool that these teachers are learning about this science and teaching their students about it so then they'll be more informed at an earlier age and can share that information also with um, their families, their peers. And then in addition to um, teachers, we also work closely with middle and high school students. We have a couple of programs um, that target those audiences. Um, so this picture is from um, Youth Engaging in the Science of Resilience, or Yes Resilience. Uh, this project is um, a partnership with the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences. Um, and we have uh, two cohorts um, for this program. We have students from the, a rural area and students from urban areas learning about climate change um, and the impacts of um, climate events. Um, and the goal is that they will learn about um, these topics, um, bring that uh, back to their communities, and be advocates um, for uh, the environment. And then finally, we engage with undergraduates at UNC in two different ways. Um, the first is through research experiences um, within labs. Um, so this picture is showing a researcher um, guiding a student through um, a research experiment, and that's through our Increasing Diversity and Enhancing Academia program. Um, this program not only gives students experience working in a lab, but also um, prepares them for graduate school if that's something they want to do in a, in a STEM field. And then the other way we engage undergraduates is through um, internships, through the Eco Studio program. Um, this program is co-directed by myself and Brian Ness. Um, we uh, work with a lot of different organizations and get students into those organizations so they can get some real world experience. The student in this picture um, was interning with the town of Hillsboro. Um, and specifically in this picture, she was doing a Creek Week outreach event in Orange County. Um, but we work with a lot of different organizations, like I said, on campus. Um, for example, UNC Energy Management, Sustainable Carolina, um, many different uh, local governments like the town of Hillsboro, Chapel Hill, Durham, Carboro, um, lots of nonprofits that are focused on um, environmental and sustainability uh, topics. And then we've more recently um, started partnering, partnering with some startups in renewable energy. So we're really excited to be offering those as well. So I'm hoping that um, you've through this presentation, you've seen how you might get involved in some of the work that we do, or at the very least want to get involved in an internship, whether that's um, being a student in an internship or being a mentor as some of the others in the room. Thank you.